If you're struggling with a new Hitman Freelancer mode, arguably the greatest thing IOI has ever done with the game, then it's important to understand some lesser known mechanics to help you succeed. Before we get into that though, if you're just looking for a way to cheese through this new mode, then all you have to do is close the game either before the end of a round or before you die and you won't lose a thing. That means Alt F4 on PC or closing the game on your console and you'll get another attempt at the contract the next time you load your save. It also means you're free to experiment with what you can get away with whenever the shit hits the wind. Now if you are actually looking for some tips and strategies, then let's start off with leveling. With 100 levels to churn through, it's important to understand how to gain XP in order to level as quickly as possible. Unlike the way the campaign wants you to play, generally as a silent assassin, Freelancer provides unique objectives for each and every contract. If you want to level up fast, complete as many of these objectives as possible, and don't worry about bodies found or leaving any witnesses so long as the objectives don't involve those requirements. In such specific cases, you won't be penalized at all for playing aggressively, so feel free to mow down every guard en route to your target. While your initial focus should be on obtaining as many mercies as necessary to increase your gear collection, don't spend too much time trying to take out all the couriers roping out of the way safes. Ultimately, the more contracts you can complete in the least amount of time will yield you more mercies than you know what to do with. When it comes to prestige objectives, always try to complete these, as they're generally half of your total XP reward. Failing to do so will only make leveling an even more grueling grind than it already is. Also be sure to take out any assassins or lookouts whenever possible, as they'll actually yield you more XP at the end of the round. The only penalty is to try to avoid are either when you take out civilians or execute the wrong suspect, so you'll often have a much easier time at things with a more aggressive playstyle, removing any obstacles forcefully. Next, let's delve into what NPCs can see and hear, as you'll need to exploit these mechanics heavily in order to succeed in every single contract. Whenever you need to use an unsilenced weapon, you can ensure no nearby NPCs can hear you with the two-door rule. If you and your nearest NPC are separated by at least two closed doors, they won't be able to hear a gunshot from your current position. Distractions are also useful for luring NPCs towards you, which they will investigate so long as they didn't see you throw the particular item in their vicinity. You can exploit this by running behind them as they're investigating the initial distraction, then tossing another item over their head to get them to move forward. Also be sure to note the question mark above their heads if you want to distract them again without losing their attention. Wait one second after it disappears before tossing the next one. As far as vision goes, the NPCs do have a cone of vision of approximately 90 degrees, though you might as well believe it to be a full 180 if you want to be on the safe side. To exploit their vision, use what I call the three wall rule. Whenever you need to shoot at something near several NPCs, reduce their cone of vision by using visual obstructions like doors or walls to your left, to your right, and behind you. As long as they never see the source of the disturbance, you are in the clear. If you're a new player, try to avoid campaigns with Colorado, as it's almost impossible to completely block NPC vision without getting spotted in the outside areas, and given that every NPC on the map is armed, you'll be in for a bad time if you make a mistake. If you're taking on a contract with several targets, there are some optimal ways to speed things along. If you don't have to worry about objectives like hide all bodies or no bodies found, grab the explosive phone for an easy elimination. The medics are the next sure bet to reduce the target population, as using the remote gas grenade in conjunction with the seeker dart gun will yield you three easy accident kills. The gas grenade is extremely useful whenever a target is in a populated area, as you can either bring a large weapon like a sniper rifle at the start of the round to get a briefcase, or you can use your map to find the briefcase nearby. Note that most, but not all maps, have briefcases hidden somewhere for you to purpose. Conceal the gas grenade into the briefcase and you've got yourself a great way to take out targets who are a bit of a public nuisance. And once you've maxed out your freelancer tools, using a single item like a gas remote will ensure a 100% likelihood you'll receive the same item as a reward at the end of the round, allowing for three emetic pacifications for every contract. If you don't have any of the aforementioned tools available, use the three wall rule to get a shot off or look around your environment to create accident opportunities. In general, just try to do as many objectives as possible for your first target so you can speed through the remainders. Showdown missions are a bit tricky when you're starting out as a freelancer, though an incredibly useful way of isolating your target from other prospects is to observe their meeting types. If your target has an agenda meeting, for instance, you simply need to find one such prospective target who doesn't match the real suspect having the same kind of meeting, then knock them out and steal their phone. Once you have the correct meeting phone, you can then head to an extremely isolated area of the map to lure the remaining prospects. This will give you time to set a trap and take out the leader away from prying eyes. Leading up to the showdown missions, you'll want to clear out any alerted areas first. Showdowns are not good to have in alerted areas, so think in advance at the start of the campaign which map will be best for your showdown. 
Personally, I tend to go for open maps like Mendoza, Berlin, Dubai, or Ambrosia Island, as they're all multi-leveled and offer easy access to high-ranking disguises, making it easy to get started. It can also be great for sniping, as NPCs have a hard time looking vertically. Sometimes you'll be given some really difficult objectives, or ones that don't synergize with the others. In those cases, go with whichever ones will give you more XP, but in most cases, you're bound to get objectives that pair well together, with many of them related to traps or accidents. Trap objectives, and traps in general, are now accidents on the go, thanks to the newly added oil and water canisters. Spilled oil pairs well with ignitables, like the big one firework, but there's an even easier way to strike a spark, by shooting a wrench or other metal objects placed directly on the spill. This makes oil spills super easy to do by using common objects for the accident catalyst, while water spills require a taser or similar electrically charged items that are less easy to come by. When it comes to target push objectives, just place your trusty coin on a windowsill and lure the target nearby. They'll see the coin and move on to the window, triggering a possible push event. Note that the height of the fall makes a difference here, as a shortfall will only knock out the target instead of eliminating them. Another lesser known way to cause accidents is in levels like Ambrosia Island, where there are areas of standing water. Simply shoot a guard in the kneecap and they'll fall face first in the water and drown. This is a very useful tactic, especially if you're luring a target to a meeting. Lastly, you've got two types of explosive accidents that are extremely useful, lethal and concussive. For lethal, use propane tanks, and for concussive, use fire extinguishers. What was your favorite trap or accident objective so far in Freelancer? Let me know down below. Once you've acquired a decent sniper rifle collection, it's time to put them to use. On certain maps like Sapienza or Haven Island, sniping is often a great way to take out targets quickly. This is especially true if you're getting the objectives relating to sniping, as the game generally sets up some of the targets to be taken out from a distance. Even if you don't end up needing it, bringing along a sniper rifle still nets you a briefcase, which you can use to store emetic grenades or other useful items. Once you level up your carry capacity enough, it's almost always a good idea to bring one along. Bananas are a unique item that requires placement on the ground, holding both bumpers on the controller, and then the target needs to walk over the banana in order to slip and fall. Note that you will most likely not be super precise with this, so instead of trying to predict the target's path, place a coin just ahead of the banana so they'll absolutely walk over it. This trick also works great with rakes. Lastly, if things go tits up and you absolutely need to rampage your way out of a bad situation, you only have two options change your disguise immediately, or try to find a choke point where you can apply the three wall rule. Out in the open, you're a sitting duck, but the AI is pretty dumb when it can't flank you. Simply find a choke point and lay waste to the onslaught of guards until the threat is no more. Hopefully you've learned something here that'll help you skate through the 100 levels of Freelancer. If you did, then click some buttons to help me out. Freelancer is easily peak Hitman, the best and most ingenuitive the series has ever been. After playing the series for 23 years, I am really impressed with what IOI has been able to do here, as it's endlessly engaging to be challenged with different objectives while simultaneously leveling up 47's expansive homestead. I'm absolutely enthralled by the addition of Freelancer Mode to Hitman 3. What are your thoughts on it? And are you a veteran or a new player? Let me know down in the comments. Hey, thanks again for watching. See you in the next one!